Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another very interesting video. We've got a very nice case of swimmer's ear in this video, uh, what we call a titus externa. So it's a bacterial infection of the outer ear. That's what we typically mean when, when we say swimmer's ear in the UK. Um, and this is the normal ear. So this is the non-infected ear uh, on the patient's other side. I thought I would show you the non-infected ear first because this gives you a good idea of what's normal for the patient. So there's a little bit of redness and dry skin around the outside near the entrance to the ear canal. But if we look here, there's dead skin, there's ordinary yellow, yellowish brown wax in the ear canal. I wouldn't say there are any hallmarks here of infection. So, you know, swelling, redness, um, pain and so on and so forth. This is a fairly normal ear. And uh, what we're doing here is just cleaning up, just quickly removing some debris so that we can visualize the eardrum. And then I'll show you the swimmer's ear or the infected ear. And uh, lovely looking eardrum back there, the sort of grayish shiny skin. And there's just a little bit of residual dead skin there. But overall, lovely looking ear. So now I'll show you the infected ear. So this is the exterior. And as you can see, there's redness, there's a fissure in the skin. So there's like a crack in the skin right there. Um, everything looks very sore. And then if we move inside the ear canal, you'll see that it, it, it's quite swollen. And you may think that this is an ear filled with pus. Um, I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of pus in there. Um, it, it's basically it's what you would call kind of a sluffy ear, I suppose. So there's, lot, there's a lot of wet, dead skin in there. So there's probably pus in there as well. I shouldn't say pus really, I should say purulent matter. But uh, either way, this is the sort of what you'd tend to find, what you'd expect in an ear with a titus externa. So the ear sheds lots of dead skin, which we've talked about in other videos. But essentially, you know, when, when, when there's an infection there, um, lots of growth, the white blood cells in the tissue will release growth factor, which will make the skin produce and divide very rapidly. So that's called rapid cell turnover. And you get sh uh, this kind of rapid shedding of dead skin into the ear canal. Um, and that's what we're dealing with here. And you can see just how narrow the ear canal is on this side compared to the normal ear. But um, just flicking back quickly to the terminology, um, just to clarify, the term swimmer's ear and surfer's ear seem to be used quite interchangeably depending on where you live in the world. In the UK, when somebody says swimmer's ear to me, that I, I'm usually thinking a bacterial infection of the outer ear. Whereas if somebody says surfer's ear to me, I'm usually thinking, ooh, there's, this is an ear canal with bony growths in it, which we call exostosis, which I featured on another video. And you get these bony growths if, you, if you're continually exposed to cold water. Um, sometimes, not everyone gets them, but uh, very common in surfers, as you can imagine. Um, whereas in other parts of the world, if you say surfer's ear to a doctor or a healthcare professional, they'll think that you mean a bacterial infection. So th those terms are, are used quite interchangeably. It's much easier just to say a titus externa, which is an infection, usually a bacterial infection, can be fungal, um, or just say exostosis, which is bony growths in the ear. But uh, here you can see we, we're, the ear canal is looking pretty clean already. Um, we're not gonna be able to get all of this wet dead skin because again, the, the, because it's infected, um, the skin is very, very sensitive um, and we certainly don't want to be poking around in there. We certainly don't want to cause any bleeding or any, you know, further, um, uh, you know, cracks in the skin. We don't want to cause any abrasion or, or you know, bleeding. Um, and this patient will then be in line for, for drops. So she'll take some acetic acid drops, which is diluted vinegar, essentially. And we'll also get her general practitioner doctor to prescribe further drops which will contain acetic acid and uh, also uh, those drops will contain a steroid and an antibiotic as well um, which is kind of the usual cocktail of, of medicine that that a patient like this would get um, the most important thing actually is that the ear is clear of most debris so um, you know if your ear is filled with dead skin then it's you know the medicine will not have you know a good effect um, watch the eardrum just back here so I'm going to ask the patient to, do you see that right there? I'll ask her to do it again. See that? Uh, what I've asked her to do there, again, did you see that? What I've asked her to do there, and sometimes I do this um, at the end of a procedure, is I get the patient to pinch their nose, and then I get them to try and blow through their nose, 
Uh, and if you've ever been diving, then you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But basically, when you try and do that, it's called a Valsalva maneuver. And uh, because the air has nowhere to go, it shoots up your eustachian tubes to your middle ear cavity. And then because you're inflating the middle ear cavity, the eardrum, you know, deflects outward. So this tells me that the patient isn't congested. Um, so there we go. I thought that was, you know, quite a, a short but a, quite a nice case. Um, you know, it's nice just to feature swimmers here on the, on the, on the channel. If you have any questions, uh, uh, leave them down in the comments section below. I'll try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you on the next video.